So this is the recycled rich light that I had left over from last year's great guitar build off build. So last year I built the Avonk and I used rich light as the top. So I bought a sheet of rich light and this is the leftover. So all I did was I just ran it through my bandsaw and I cut it in half. These are essentially a little over a hundred mil. So this one's hitting about 114 wide. And this one is also about 114, 114 mil wide. And they're about 610 millimeters long. So I got basically two fretboards out of this and I'll just, you know, pick one and we'll use this as the one we're going to machine. All right. This is the rich light. It's 6.3 millimeters thick. That's going to be our fretboard. All right, these are the inlays that have been machined in onto the top of the rich light. And I debated whether or not I was going to put inlays in here. I prefer a fretboard without them. So we'll use a very subdued color. It won't be a high contrast color. I'm thinking like a deep, deep, dark red. So these are the type of inlays that are both the top inlay as well as the side dot. So you see my pencil line, that's the edge of the fretboard and I'm going beyond it. So when the contour shape is cut, you'll see a little sliver of side dot. We're just going to mix up some epoxy and fill this up. Let it dry overnight.
I just got done machining the fretboard and it came out exactly what I expected. So we have these channels under the fretboard that are going to allow us to have a little bit more gluing surface for the carbon fiber tubes. And the channels extend all the way out to the headstock and out to the heel. The side dots are part of the inlays on the top and they're just red right now. And this is just uh, rough sanded at this point. So I got all the machining marks out, well, most of the machining marks out. Still quite a few here. And there's a dip here for the headstock. So it goes from your standard size thickness and it dips down to about, I don't know, that is maybe four or five mil. And then there's a channel here, a pocket for the locking nut. So I ordered the locking nut, but I built this and designed this pocket sight unseen. So I don't have the locking nut on hand to take accurate measurements. And I'm on a time crunch, so I really wanted to get this off the table. And I just did the machining and I made it about a mil wider than it should be just to compensate for any kind of discrepancies when I do get the locking nut, but it'll seat in there. There'll be two screws, one there, one there, that go into the carbon fiber tubes down below. And of course we'll have the graph tech nut here, locking nut. These are the channels. And the channels are excellent. They are gonna give me the just the right amount of gluing surface. And it's gonna help these tubes seat in there so when I'm clamping them down, they don't move around. Good thing about epoxy is you don't really need a lot of pressure. And I'm leaving the machining marks in here, so there's definitely some machining marks. And that's gonna help with the mechanical bond with epoxy. Epoxy is a little bit different than wood glue. So we don't really need a lot of pressure. We don't want a lot of squeeze out. And we definitely want some texture there for that mechanical bond. So the top needs to be fine sanded so that we can get these inlays to look really nice. But right now they're fine, so. so once there's like a finish on here, it's gonna look pretty good. You know, it's gonna be dark. And those red inlays are gonna pop. So I only have two of these 600 millimeter long tubes at the moment. So I'm gonna have to get a third one. But they seat in just perfectly and they don't move around. So my plan is tomorrow morning, I'm gonna glue the middle one in. These are so cool. These are bamboo dowels. And so I need to put some type of dowel in the rod so when I'm drilling the two holes for the locking nut, you know, it just doesn't go into air, it doesn't go into something. And so these are bamboo. So I get to like truly say that, you know, there's no wood in this neck. And these bamboo things are so precise because typically with wooden dowels, you don't really get much precision. These come in around 12.94 mil, which is perfect because these have a 14 mil inner diameter and I need to have something that's under 14 mil. Just to demonstrate what's gonna happen is I'm gonna put these dowels in here and you can see how perfect this fit is. So it has just the right amount of space I need for the epoxy. Crimson Guitars sent me this cool care package full of goodies, lots and lots of goodies. And I actually got some fret wire too, which is really cool. And I don't really know what kind of fret wire it is, but we're gonna use it. All that really matters is the tang depth because I do my fret slots on the CNC at a particular tang depth. And as long as this is 
the same as what I usually use, and should no problem. And I'm not even going to bother radiusing this. This already has a radius on it. And since it's nickel, it'll just go right in, regardless of whatever this radius is. And I don't even remember what I radius this to. It's a compound radius, I think. Crazy idea. Building a guitar neck out of carbon fiber tubing. I don't want to say that I'm the first to do this. I know there are a lot of mad scientists out there with YouTube channels. But I am pretty proud of it. Now, I don't know if it's going to work. This could actually literally break in my face. And I regret using this concept idea for a great guitar build off. I wish this was just a standalone video of me experimenting and taking my time with it. I did have to rush this. I am on like a deadline. I have to finish this whole guitar by November, which is virtually impossible. So you've seen my design videos. You've seen the CNC do its job. This is a rich light fretboard and there are three channels in which the carbon fiber rods can sit in those channels and the rich lights kind of hugging them. And it gives me a little bit more surface area to use epoxy. And this really is a testament to how well epoxy is going to do. Will epoxy be enough to hold this neck together? I don't know. Will this neck work? I don't know. This could fail. Right now, I'm at about 60% success rate. I think I have a, maybe a 60% chance this will work, but I have a lot of doubts. It feels great. I know that's kind of the first question. Oh, it's gonna feel weird. Of course it's gonna feel weird. That's the point. The point is to have an instrument and approach it differently and have it speak to you differently and have it interact with you differently. And it's going to create basically new unique pathways in your brain and it's going to make you play differently. And that's the whole point. It's thin as heck. But I mean, I'm courting, you know, everything just feels OK. The whole idea of like a C shaped neck is a little old fashioned, right? I mean, think about that curve of your hand when you're holding it or like cowboy chords. But then of course you have people like Ola Strandberg who made the, you know, the endure neck, which is kind of for shredders where the thumb is following a plane. You know, there's no need for a C shape. You know, you're not doing cowboy chords. So this is just another interesting approach. It's not better, it's not worse. It's just different. It's a new, unique experience. And that's what I've said for the last few builds. I don't build guitars, I build unique experiences. This is no different, but I do have some doubts about whether it's going to work or not. Let's talk about those. So the first thing that is bothering me is the rich light. Now I know rich light makes a couple of fretboards that mimic the look of wood. And I should have gone with those. The black is just not ideal simply because once you actually cut into the actual black, you're getting kind of a plastic look and in trying to get that plastic look to shine, as you know, requires going through all the grits, buffing, doing all sorts of crazy stuff to get it to shine. And then it's prone to even the slightest imperfections when you touch it. Like you can really mar it just with your fingers and the oils in your natural hands and it doesn't look good. And I was kind of chasing my tail, sanding, sanding, buffing, trying to get it to shine. Finally just gave up. I don't have time for that in this build. I have a deadline. So what I did was I kind of just used a, hot, a low grit paper, right? I think it was just 220. And I got this kind of um, gray 
kind of primer look. And I kind of like that look. It's really industrial. It does not have a gloss to it or a shine. But it does look kind of cool. So I'm debating whether or not to spray the whole neck back and front with satin nitro. Let me know what you think. Should we keep it the way it is, the way it is now, or should we spray it with satin nitro? I'm thinking just because I don't have time to do anything else, I'm just going to leave it as is. But it's coming out pretty cool. Now, what's scary is when I put pressure on it, I can hear some creaking. And the creaking probably has to do with the fact is that these three rods are not glued together. They're just loose. They're glued to the rich light, but not together. So there could be some scraping with the rods because they're not being tensioned at the same rate, right? Because when I'm doing this, I'm putting more tension on obviously the long one there. But when we put this on the body, the neck pocket of the body will actually, you know, start whatever, 17, 19th fret. So it's going to start here. So any kind of, all the epoxy will be glued right there. And any type of tension will start here and go up to the locking nut up there. Now, of course, now I'm starting to think about better ways to build this. And I like the idea of the neck pocket kind of really grabbing all three together. And there's nothing like that at the top. So I wish I could have put like a little headpiece where you have a piece of wood that's really grabbing all three at the same time, because there's nothing like that right now. So a lot of really cool design solutions that I can think of now. So I wish this had just been a prototype and then I could have maybe perfected this down the road. But we can still do that. So in any case, I'm not going to finish this, I think. We're going to leave it kind of with this kind of like kind of grungy, dirty primer look. Fret job is pretty darn good. So you're going to have really nice shiny frets. Locking nut holes are already here. The dowels are in place. So the locking nut screws can go into actual bamboo dowels. The bamboo dowels aren't long, so I only used enough of the dowel to make it to that screw. So you know, about that much. 80 mil, basically, for that long one. And then they get consecutively shorter, the shorter the tube goes. So it's not like the whole 12 inch dowel in there, it's just pieces of it. And the same thing with the bottom, because when we epoxy this in the pocket, the epoxy will just go in the tube and it'll just run down the tube. So I wanted to plug these so that epoxy couldn't go down the tube and really kind of grabbing it into the neck pocket. So I have plugs here and plugs there, but it's still a hollow tube. And what's that going to sound like? I don't know. Hope it works. I really do. So I think this is a good stopping point for the neck video because I got to move on to the body. I have to finish this on time. And yeah, there was definitely corners cut corners in terms of the finishing. And that's one reason why I loved the carbon fiber tubes is that they're finished already in that this is a matte finish that these tubes come in. It's obviously a resin finish, but it's perfect. It's like something you buy off the shelf. It looks fabulous. And I thought that takes care of like 50% of my neck. I regret using the black rich light. I wish I'd used one of the faux wood ones because it might've looked a lot better when you sand it. Black looks terrible when you sand it. And the other thing about it is you have to wet sand it to get any kind of good results. It's just, it was a pain was chasing my tail trying to get a good finish on it. I'm giving up on the finish. It's going to look like this. It's going to look industrial. That's the look I'm going for because I just don't have time to do it. Nor do I, I don't know anyone with a spray booth. If I did, I'd have them just gloss the whole thing and I would make it look really cool. Um, but yeah, this is what we're going to go for. So I already have the locking nut. That's the last thing I need to do. I haven't decided if I'm going to spray nitro over the whole thing just to kind of protect it, but I don't think I do need it. And then once we put this on the body, if we do feel like it's not going to work, I do have the opportunity to squeeze a little bit more epoxy in those little triangle corners. So when you put circles together like these circles, there's a little triangle in between each and I can just kind of like syringe epoxy down those channels so it flows all the way down. That might give it a little bit more rigidity and strength, but we'll only do that if we need to. I think it'll work. I don't know if it will, but I'm crossing my fingers that it does. I hope it doesn't blow up in my face because it's such a beautiful, beautiful concept. Okay, that's my neck. I'm calling it. Let's move on to the body for the next video, which is also going to be kind of weird and unique. This is going to be such a weird build. I hope you guys like it. Thanks for watching.
Take it easy.